Wyoming. It's known for bison, its national parks, and its cowboy culture. Wyoming is a beautiful state. I love the state. It's the least populous state in the U.S. It's probably not the place you think of of having a thriving immigrant community. But in Sheridan, Wyoming, population some 18,000, I discovered the beginnings of one of the oldest Pakistani communities in America. Obviously, in Wyoming, there's not a lot of Pakistani. I mean, if they're Pakistani, we're related to them. The town even has a statue dedicated to a Pakistani man, known as Hot Tamale Loot, whose descendants created a business empire. My dad always said, if you give something, don't worry about it. You always get it back, you know. But the Pakistani community in Wyoming has faced discrimination, too, especially when it comes to their faith. They burned Quran, a couple of Qurans, you know, in, in protest. So why are there Pakistanis in Wyoming? And what brought them to the American West? The story of Pakistanis in America is more than a century old. But as a Pakistani American myself, I was fascinated to learn that our history in this country had roots in the foothills of Wyoming's Bighorn Mountains. And this statue is a symbol of that history and a testament to one of the longest standing Pakistani communities in the U.S. This statue um, is of my dad, Hot Tamale Louie, or his name was Zarif Khan. Zarif Khan came to the U.S. in 1907, 40 years before Pakistan became a country, as part of the first wave of South Asian immigration into the United States. And he's probably the first immigrant from that part of the world to settle in Wyoming. So he's clearly has a spatula with a hamburger and the bun with some pickles. Yeah. It says Hamburger Louie. Why, why did they call him Hamburger Louie? Well, because when he was pushing the cart at the time, he was known for his hamburgers and tamales. And later, he, when he had the restaurant, he had chili also. It was called Louie's, and then people just gave him the name Hot Tamale and Hamburger Louie, you know? Unfortunately, the building that had Louie's restaurant was demolished, but Zarif Jr. still remembers it. You can order your hamburger with uh, onion pickles and mustard, but if you ask for ketchup, he'd get mad. Don't, you don't want to ruin a hamburger with ketchup. South Asian men start immigrating to California and the Pacific Northwest near the turn of the 20th century to work in the farming, logging, and railroad industries. While about 85% of the immigrants from South Asia were Sikh, and most of the remaining 10 to 15% were Muslim, they were all incorrectly considered Hindus by Americans. The new South Asian laborers soon became targets of hate-filled rhetoric. They were viewed as the problem, and that rhetoric sometimes turned into actual violence. In 1907, South Asians were victims of mob violence, and hundreds of them were detained in what's now known as the Bellingham Riots. That same year, a 12-year-old named Zarif Khan came to Washington State. Came alone, he not with no relatives, nothing. Worked on the ships and came to Seattle, and he worked on the West Coast there. He traveled to Montana. He was in South Dakota, Deadwood for a while, and then they said, somebody told him there was a railroad coming through Sheridan. So he decided to move over here. Around the time that Louis arrived to Wyoming, Native American communities in the West were being displaced by white settlers. They also faced routine discrimination, but at Louis, Native Americans were always welcome. He was one of the first person to serve American Natives. Back then, they weren't allowed you know, to be served. He didn't care who they were, you know, everybody has to eat. And as Louis kept serving up his hamburgers and tamales, it became the stuff of legend. There was a rancher that told me that they lived in KC, that's 70 miles away. They'd come to Sheridan every Saturday to have hamburger Louis burgers and then take a bunch home with them. They said you never had a hamburger until you ate his hamburger. But at this time in America, anti-Asian sentiment was high. In 1917, the U.S. completely banned immigration from South Asia by creating the Asiatic Bard Zone. And in 1923, the Supreme Court ruled that only whites and African Americans could become citizens. And my dad claimed that he was white. Because, because in people in Afghanistan, and we live close to the Afghanistan border, are more light-complected and stuff. So he thought of himself white, I think, just to become an American citizen. The government said Asians weren't white and stripped Louis of his U.S. citizenship in 1926, just a year after he'd gotten it. Louis remained in Sheridan as an immigrant. Even though he didn't know how to read or write, he made good investments in the stock market. Louis gained enough wealth that he became known for his philanthropy, like when he helped out American soldiers in World War II. He sent uh, cigarettes, candy bars, other things that they needed. Louis's generosity was well known in Sheridan, 
he would see people and if they didn't have money, and my dad said, Bo boy, what do you want? He didn't ask him for money. He said, get me next time, catch me next time. And in Pakistan, he sent money to build three mosques. He was really proud of being Pakistani. But everybody, if you asked in Sheridan, where was my dad from? They'd say, he's from Turkey, he's from Greek, he's from Afghanistan. But they never said Pakistan. Louis got American citizenship when he applied again in 1954. And this time, it wasn't taken away. He married later on in life and brought his wife Fatma to the States, where they raised a family of six. Zarif continued to travel back and forth to Pakistan to see family. And it was during one of these trips that he was murdered by a jealous relative. His death made front page news in Wyoming, Colorado, and South Dakota. And his influence has reverberated to the 21st century. Louis' life story made it into a detailed New Yorker profile in 2016 that led to the creation of this statue two years later. And there's even a musical about his life. I mean, everybody has history, everybody's got a past, and everybody's family comes from somewhere, but, you know, not everybody gets a statue of somebody they're related to. Nobody, not everybody gets to hear or get their story out there from their family. When I asked around in Sheridan, people still remembered Louis and his hamburgers more than 50 years after his death. Best hamburger in the world. <laughs> Most of it came down your arms. While Louis might have been the first Pakistani in the state, it's because of his wife Fatma that the Khans of Wyoming have a thriving family business. After Louis' death, Fatma brought over her brother Farid, and they started working in the hotel business. She bought a, uh, this hotel, she, a uh, small hotel, and she wanted me to manage it. So I went over there and managed that to about three and a half years. Farid and his wife Bibi have been living in the U.S. since the 70s, but they're still very Pakistani. It's a, it's a yogurt drink. Yeah. Good. Is you take the butter out and whatever is left over, <laughs> then I'm gonna make me probably make a ghee out of it, you know. As more relatives came in the 80s and had children, the Khan family and the business empire grew. Some of the Khan family moved from Sheridan to Gillette, about a hundred miles away, and then they started buying and building hotels throughout Wyoming. So how many Khans live in the Rockies now? Oh, uh, say a couple. Easily, you can say a couple of hundred or more. Freed and Bibi currently own 11 hotels, and the extended Khan family owns a few dozen more. I made money in every one of them. <laughs> in fact, we found out that the hotel we were staying at in Sheridan was owned by the Khan family, too. Now the Khans own hotels not just in Wyoming, but in Colorado, Montana, and South Dakota. We all manage hotels. We're all in the hotel industry. My brother, my dad, all of our relatives, um, my uncles, my cousins, my dad's cousins. Most of our family has something to do with hotels or hospitality. While the Khan family has a proud history in Wyoming, things haven't always been easy. For some of the children, there was bullying at a young age. They would call them ragheads or something like that, or go to your, go ride a camel or something like that. And there was also some trouble when the Khan family was trying to build this mosque, named after Farid and Fatima's sister. It's just the third mosque in the state of Wyoming, and the only one for hundreds of miles in any direction. They burned the Quran, a couple of Qurans in protest. About five or six people, but their bunch of town people came against it in protest against those people. The Khan say that most of the people in town backed their efforts to build the mosque, and that not all Wyomingites held anti-Muslim views. We had support from the mayor and local people, and they say they know the Khan. They've been living here for a long time and doing business here with everyone. I attended a Friday prayer at the mosque where all the worshippers turned out to be members of the Khan family. It's just kind of harsh to see like most people thinking that every single Muslim has to be some type of um, threat to the community. We're just normal, peaceful people. After traveling to this part of the country for the first time, I was taken aback by the beauty of the landscape. And I could see why Zarif Khan, all those years ago, would have chosen to settle down in Wyoming. Wyoming is a beautiful state. You can come anytime. You can see beautiful places open, clean air, fresh air. And after speaking to so many members of the Khan family, I learned that they're fiercely proud to be from Wyoming. And we're Wyomingites in every way. There's not a place I can go that people don't talk to you. Like, if you go to some of the bigger cities, people are scared and they don't talk to you. They go, I wonder what they want from us, you know. Uh, it's no gimmick. People are down to earth. And it's peaceful. You can leave your keys in your car. People don't even lock their houses here. In Sheridan, it's very Western. Um, 
and that's what they're known for is like their Western hospitality. Everybody is just very friendly and they want you to be here. They want you to stay. Like they encourage people to come out here, but people don't realize they just think, oh, Wyoming, there's nothing there. There's, there's people here, there, you know, there's activities here. I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice place. And as third and fourth generation of Hans grew up in Wyoming, it seems that this will always be home. And to think, it all started with one man selling hamburgers in a small town in the American West.